Hey, good morning, church. I pray all is well with you. Uh, we're going to continue our study through the book of Joel. Um, and we're going to be looking at the final chapter, chapter 3. And in this chapter, it's actually a little, um, a little hard to determine how to read this chapter because there's so many scholars, some think that uh, this has already taken place. Uh, and reasons why they think that. And then there's others that think it's yet to take place. Uh, and I think there's arguments strong on both sides. So today we're going to just study this uh, for uh, the the words that we have here and, and uh, just kind of open up God's Word and read it and see how it applies to our own lives. Now you start in uh, chapter 3, verse number 1, where it says, For behold, in those days and at that time... So what days and what time is it saying for behold in those days? Well, you really need to go back to chapter 2. Uh, and I think you go back to verse number 28 where it says, And it shall come to pass after that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And then verse 32 of that same chapter, it says, And it shall come to pass that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So to me... This chapter 3, verse number 1, is referring to the time that the gospel of Jesus Christ is going out uh, into the land. And so, for behold, in those days, the days that the gospel is going out, uh, and at that time, during that time, he says, when I bring the captives of Judah and Jerusalem. He says, I will also gather all nations and bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. Now, Jehoshaphat, uh, there's no real place that is the valley of Jehoshaphat. But what that word means in that statement, it's the judgment of God. And so he said, I'm going to bring down, I'm going to gather all nations and bring them down to my judgment. Uh, and so you can see how this could be referring to a future event. But at the same time, this did, some of this stuff in this chapter did happen. And so. Uh, it could be either one. Now, uh, go ahead and read the rest of this chapter, but I want to jump over into um, verse number uh, 10, uh, where it talks about preparing for the battle. Uh, and it talks about a battle that is going to take place. And it says, Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Um, whenever I read that, I just had to think about each one of us uh, are in the battle uh, for the kingdom, for for the lives and the souls of, of men and women. Uh, and we all should be about the battle, fighting off the fiery darts of Satan. And we use whatever tools God has given us. God has given us several tools. His word, prayer, his spirit, praise. Um, all of these are tools that we have to use uh, in the battle. Uh, and he says, even if you think you're weak, be strong. Be strong in the Lord, uh, for he is with you and he will win. Look at verse number 12. Let the nations be weakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. So again, he says, hey, nations, get ready. You're going to stand before the judgment of God. Um, now, if you jump down into verse number 16, you see it says, The Lord also will roar from Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem. In other words, there will be a time whenever Jerusalem is restored to worship of God the Father. Um, in fact, uh, it finishes in this chapter in verse number 21. So it says, For I will acquit them of the guilty of the bloodshed, whom I have not acquitted. For the Lord dwells in Zion. Uh, and, and there's this assurance that, hey, God's will is going to be accomplished in his purpose and his plan. So hope you enjoy studying uh, the book of Joel, uh, chapter 3. Uh, may God bless uh, you. And also, hey, look forward to seeing you Sunday uh, as we join together as a church to worship our, our Father. Uh, look forward to seeing you. Have a great day.